Hello. Welcome to the Unbridled LLC online discussion series. To observe horses is to know horses. This is part one of a three-part series that will highlight key areas of horse behavior that often go unnoticed, but that clearly show us what horses value most in the relationships in their lives. Today in part one, I will be talking about how horses use synchronization to express and build emotional connections. Part two will focus on how horses use space to communicate and to maintain healthy relationships. And part three will look at how horses use touch in their own relationships. My name is Kim Hallen, and I am the president of Unbridled LLC, located just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Through Unbridled, I help people from all walks of life return to their most authentic and compassionate selves through the healing power of horses. I do this largely by showing people what we can learn just from observing herd behavior, and I also interpret what the horses are saying to us through their body language and when we interact with them. You can learn more about me and the work I do by visiting my website at www.unbridled.guru. So let's start with what prompted me to create this discussion series and why you should invest the time to watch all three episodes. Some of you may be familiar with Stephen Covey's famous book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Habit number five in this book is seek first to understand, then to be understood. And what is the best way to understand another? We need to observe, pay attention, and ask questions. I truly believe that everything we need to know about what our horses value can be learned by watching how they behave in their natural environment. And by natural environment in this context, I do mean the domestic herd setting. Although it would be really fun and fascinating, the truth is we do not need to go out and observe wild horses to learn what horses value in their relationships with one another. We simply need to ask ourselves, how do the horses before us communicate? What choices do they make? What patterns and habits recur? And which behaviors remain constant over time? Now, I realize that most horse owners do not have the opportunity or the luxury of spending hours upon hours observing horses. But the good news is, I have already done this. I've actually spent thousands of hours watching the behaviors and body language of my small herd of horses. Observing them is one of my greatest passions, and truthfully, it's kind of an obsession for me. Um, and today I'm excited because I can now share what I've learned so the information can benefit others. What I'm going to share over the course of this three-part discussion series will forever change the way you see ho your horses, the way you interact with them, and the quality of the relationships you have with them. That's right. Today, I can help you increase the quality of the connection with your horse, communicate more effectively with your horse, feel safer and more relaxed with your horse, strengthen the emotional bond with your horse, be more present in the moment with your horse, and most importantly, have more fun with your horse. The bottom line is this, it pays to pay attention. We expect our horses to pay attention to us all the time, and it feels great when they do. Well, it also means a lot to them when we make an effort to reciprocate. And it may seem obvious when I say that horses rely on body language to communicate, but as horse people, unfortunately, we often seem to forget this. And the only way our horses have to communicate with us is through movement and positioning. This means movement and positioning of maybe particular body parts, such as the ears or the tail, but it also means movement and positioning of their entire bodies in relation to ours or in relation to one another. The key point for today's discussion is that in horse language, synchronization equals connection. When horses mirror one another physically, it is a sign of deep emotional connection in the moment. I wanna say that again, because I really want that to sink in for you. When horses mirror one another physically, this is a sign of a deep emotional connection in the moment. And the truth is it works with us too. Whether you realize it or not, whether you're paying attention to it or not, your horse is probably already making attempts to express his connection with you via mirroring. Here's a quick photo to illustrate what I mean. This is me and my mare Tempo walking on the beach. This was taken about six or seven years ago, and it was the first time I had taken Tempo to the beach. 
And while I remember feeling very connected with her that day, and particularly in this moment, I was not at the time paying any attention to synchronizing my steps with hers. And yet, if you look closely, you can see that her front legs and my two legs are completely synchronized. We are in the exact same moment in our step. Now, you might think this could just easily be a coincidence, but I'm here to tell you what I've learned is that it was not. And after you see what I'm going to share with you in the coming slides, you'll know this too, that it's not coincidence. So first, I want to introduce you to Puck and Tempo. They are a mother-daughter pair who have lived together on my farm since Tempo was born 11 years ago. The beautiful dun mare on the left of the screen in that picture is Puck, and the cute little red dun filly by her side is Tempo. Now, you often see foals mirroring their dams, so that's not unusual. Um, and they, you know, when they're young, you see this a lot. But in most cases, once the foal is weaned, the two are separated, usually permanently. In this case, these two mares were brought back together after Tempo was weaned, and their bond today is about as tight as it gets between two horses. I really believe we can learn a lot from their example. So watching Tempo and Puck together is often like watching a pair of highly trained dancers or maybe even more likely synchronized swimmers. The two mares are not always together or side by side, but when they are, the frequency of their physical synchronicity is an outward exp expression of their internal emotional connection. And you can see a series of photos on the right here. Um, the one at the top is um, just kind of magical because the wind was blowing at just the right moment that both of their tails are also in, in, in synchronicity as well. But don't you just kind of feel the connection in that photo between the two of them? The one below that is just the two mares walking on a, on a particular day. And you can see that their steps are almost synchronized. And the one at the, at the bottom on the left um, they were actually working together in this moment. I had introduced a new horse to the herd and they were, you know, letting that horse know that he wasn't yet a uh, part of this herd and they were trotting around him and you can see the two of them. I mean, they're, they're like perfectly mirrored almost. Their legs are, their legs are exactly in sync and, um, you know, they're right next to each other. Their necks are almost in the same position. You know, the ears are just a little bit off. Um, but you know, you can feel just a ton of connection in that photo and synchronicity. And then the two on the right are just them at rest. One, obviously, when, when Tempo was a, a wee thing, that was actually, she was just a day or two old there. And then the next one is years later. But I have tons of photos of them where they're just like absolutely mirroring each other. So the emotional connection between horses in a herd is something that's actually nurtured all day, every day and especially when they are at rest. You might think that the only thing horses are doing when they're out grazing is eating, but I've watched mine enough to know the truth is they're actually really busy out there and they're quiet, quietly honing their communication and bonding skills throughout the day as they choreograph patterns, they mirror one another and they connect emotionally. So in this particular photo, you can see Puck and Tempo their bodies are like actually at the exact same angle. They're a bit apart, apart from each other in the field, but they're aligned with one another. And it's kind of hard to see their legs, but, um, and I think it's opposite front leg forward. And sometimes you see that in mirroring, it's not always the exact same leg, but their leg positions are very, very similar, even though it's the opposite leg. So they're, they're actually really connected in this moment, even though it might not seem if you just walked out there that they were paying any attention to each other. So this photo is really interesting to me, and it shows uh, two very different visual rep representations of pair bonding that happens within the larger herd. And it demonstrates also very clearly that physical proximity is not necessarily the most important determining factor when it comes to pair bonding in a herd environment. The level of synch uh, physical synchronization, uh, the level of physical synchronization or mirroring actually is the... Um, most important factor when it comes to pair bonding. So first I want you to look at Tempo and Puck. They're in the center here and they're close together and their bodies are aligned in the same direction again. This is a different day, completely different photo than the one I showed you earlier. 
both of these things, the fact that their bodies are aligned and they're in the same direction are indicators of pair bonding in the moment. And you can't really see Puck's legs. She's behind tempo um, in this photo. So I can't tell for sure, but I don't think their leg positions are actually matched in this moment. But now I want you to look at Marcus. He's the big gray on the left and Shoki, who's the smaller Bay Arabian on the right. And not only are their bodies aligned in basically the same direction, but even more importantly, look at their front legs and the position of their heads. They're like absolutely mirroring one another. And I've learned that these two factors, the, the front legs and the head position, indicate the closest emotional connection going on between horses in the moment when they're grazing. So in this photo, there are two sets of horses that are pair bonding, but actually the two who are farther apart from one another to me actually seem the most emotionally connected in this moment because of the way they're mirroring each other so perfectly despite that space. So here are a couple more examples of, uh, to show you again, um, the levels of pair bonding that occur uh, at my herd at different times, in my herd at different times. Again, the key indicators of pair bonding while grazing are, you know, proximity of bodies together, the alignment of the body direction. So they're both facing the same direction, the leg positions. And I found that especially the front legs uh, seem to be key, key indicators. If all four legs are mirrored, that is like really saying that they are like in the moment together and then their head position and the head alignment. So I'm just curious, you know, when you look at these photos and you see some examples of it happening, and I also wanted to show you that it's not always, you know, just Puck and Tempo or just Shoki and Marcus, that, you know, it, it's all around. Cause at the top it's Tempo and Marcus and Puck and Shoki together. And then at the bottom that's Puck and Marcus together. So this happens with all the different horses in my herd, even though maybe it happens with the most frequency between Puck and Tempo. But I'm curious how often, you know, you may have gone out and observed horses at pasture and never even noticed that this type of pair bonding was happening or what level it might be happening at. It's something that seems to go completely under the radar a lot of the time. So here are a couple more examples to show you again the four indicators. Um, but I want to stress that all four indicators don't have to be present to indicate that there's bonding and synchronization happening in the moment. And especially when, you know, if there's only one or two of the factors uh, at play, but they are perfectly mirrored, that can show a really strong bonding. So in the photo on the left, you can see that Puck and Tempo, again, are pair bonding, even though they're actually relatively far apart in the pasture in this moment. And Marcus is just in the background. He's kind of doing his own thing. So he's not part of the bonding that's happening in this moment. And you can see that Puck and Tempo are aligned in body position and also in direction. And then they are also mirroring one another in leg position. And for them in this moment, it's actually all four legs. So they're pretty um, connected in this moment, even though they're fairly far apart from each other. And if you just walked out there, you might not even notice that this was happening. And in the photo on the right, you can actually see an example of tri-bonding where there's three horses that are aligned in body direction and they're, they're bonding in this moment. But you can also see that um, while Puck and, Mo and Marcus, sorry, are closer together in proximity, those are the two on the left, the gray and the dun, you can also see that um, their head positions are actually in opposite directions. And if you look at Marcus and Shoki, you can see that their head, head positions are in alignment. And so in my opinion, in this particular photo, even though Puck and Marcus are closer together, I actually think that Marcus and Shoki on the right are um, a little more connected in this particular moment because their head positions are in the same direction. So synchroniz synchronization at rest can also be exhibited at times uh, other than when horses are grazing. This, these two photos were actually taken during a recent workshop I did on uh, relaxation. And there were a group of about five or six of us who, after the horses had been out grazing for the morning and I put them in the paddock for the afternoon, they often take naps at that time. And three of them, the three that have been um, in my herd together for the longest, they've been a, a, a herd for a, a about 11 years. 
they went under the run in and we were standing to the left of the three of them. And as you can see, when we were kind of getting into our heart space and really relaxing and I looked over and I saw that all three of the horses actually had, you know, their same, the same hind leg cocked. And, um, at that moment too, I couldn't, didn't catch it in the picture, but their leg, their uh, necks were also like almost in perfect alignment. And you can see through, if you look under all the legs, you can see my, my pig Bart and, um, my other uh, horse, Marcus, and they were really not in this um, bonding moment, this um, synchronization and connected moment, but the other three were. And interestingly, a little while later, we all, the group of us walked around the back of the horses and we wanted to go um, observe um, the pig and Marcus for a little bit. And when I looked back, lo and behold, all three horses had switched their leg weight um, so that they were now resting the leg the hind leg on the right, which was a side that we had moved to. Now, again, could that be coincidence? You could say so, but I've seen this kind of thing happen enough. They were really, we had been working on getting in our heart space with them. And I think they were feeling that we were a part of this herd dynamic. And then when we moved, they all shifted as well, um, showing that they were still connected with us, even though we had moved. Pretty interesting. So now I want to talk a little bit about. Um, Synchronic synchronicity in motion. And the important thing to remember here is that this only happens when horses are working together toward a common purpose and as a team. So in this particular photo, it was taken, the three horses on the right, the bay and the two duns, the red dun and the regular dun, <laughs> regular dun, anyway, um, they had been a herd, like I said, for about 11 years. So they'd been together for a long time, ever since Tempo was born. And Marcus is a horse that I introduced to my herd a little less than a year ago. And this was probably when he had only been with the herd less than a week. And I was putting them out together for short spells during the day. And my herd worked hard to let Marcus know that he was not yet, you know, part of this uh, closely tight knit herd that I had. And so here they were working as a team to herd Marcus around. And if you look at the legs, especially Shoki, um, the bay in the, in the middle, um, or next to Marcus and Tempo, who's next to him, their legs are in perfect synchronicity and Puck's leg position is maybe just like a second or two behind them. Maybe she was trying to catch up, but she's almost with them in stride. And if you look at the connection between them, I mean, the angles of their bodies and everything, and then you look at Marcus, you can really feel how disconnected Marcus is from the energy that the other three are sharing. So this is a great example of when um, a group, in this case, it's three horses, are working together toward a co common purpose, and they are very synchronized. And the one that is not emotionally connected is not in synchronicity with them. Here's another example of synchronization when the horses are in motion and playing and showing you know, when horses are feeling emotionally connected. Um, mentally connected and when they're not. So in the top, this is a, these photos were taken probably about five or 10 minutes apart from each other. It was a, the horses were in a play session. And the one at the top is when they just started playing and they were all just kind of full of energy and expressing their individual um, joy and exuberance, but there wasn't any common purpose to it. They were all just kind of like, we, here we go. And you can see there's no synchronicity happening in that photo at all. And then a little while later, as they as they continued to run and play, they started, um, you know, actually forming patterns, and there was there was some order to what they were doing, and they were kind of winding down. And you can see, in the bottom photo, by by that point, you have actually Marcus, Puck, and Tempo, with almost the same leg positions. Shoki's kind of still off on his own, doing his own thing, which is interesting because he's at the top of the pecking order and. This is again, um, so these photos were taken not too long ago. And so Marcus was pretty well integrated into the herd now. And I, I love seeing that they were actually mirroring with him because for a long time that didn't happen at all. And in this case, it might be that Shoki's, I don't know, they're still playing some kind of game together and Shoki's on a different team in the moment. Maybe he's hurting them. I don't know. But the other three are clearly really synchronized and really working together in that moment of play. This was the same uh, play session, but at a different point in it. And um, here you have uh, pair bonding actually happening during the play. So just with two of them. And you can see clearly that Tempo and Puck in all three of these photos 
are working together in whatever game it is that they're playing with Marcus. So in all three of the photos, the two duns are um, synchronizing their leg positions and sometimes their body, actually their body positions also, not necessarily their head and neck, but you can definitely see the connection between the two mares and they're working together in this game um, and Marcus is a little bit rogue and on his own, although it was all a very positive play session. Um, but the, with the mares, their synchronicity is demonstrated. In, when horses are playing and in action, it's most commonly demonstrated with footfalls and leg position, sometimes head and neck position as well. But, but mostly I notice it with um, the leg position and footfalls. So here's something really interesting. It's absolutely true. I have observed it many times that horses also express this synchronicity and mirroring in connection with humans. And this photo I just love. So it was taken, actually, I had hired a professional photographer to come do a photo shoot with me and my horses for my website. So this was a few years ago. And I actually thought that the photo session was over. We were done. And so I had I sat down on the ground and I was talking with the photographer and I noticed that Puck and Tempo were grazing off a little bit, a little ways. And as I was chatting with the photographer, they they were kind of they just kept moving toward me and they were very much in synchronicity as they were coming toward me. And it was just beautiful. They enveloped me between them. And I mean, just look at these two mares in this moment. Their, I mean, their ear position their head position. You can't see Puck's legs, but the legs were in perfect synchronicity. And the horses are grazing here and look at their mouths. They were both even had their mouths closed at the exact same time. And I was sitting there and I could just feel the connection between them was palpable. And I was looking at Puck's face and I just, I, I wanted to reach out and touch Tempo and I instinctively knew where her leg was too. And I just wanted to feel and be part of this connection that I could feel between them. And I'm just so glad the photographer caught this moment because um, it really was quite possibly the most connected moment I've ever shared with my horses. It was such a beautiful feeling. And I, I love having that, uh, this keepsake to remember that moment. So here's something that's really cool. Um, I want you to know that you don't have to spend years developing a bond with your horses the way I have or the way that Tempo and Puck have in order to connect at this emotional level. So these are some examples showing participants in my equine assisted learning program. And in all of these photos, the, the individuals have no experience with horses. I mean, many of them had never interacted with horses before in any way. And within 20 to 30 minutes, all of them are able to connect emotionally with the horses at a level that um, often elicits mirroring behavior from the horses. So here are some more examples of that. And in many cases, it's, it's actually, it works both ways. So sometimes it is the horses are mirroring the humans and other times the humans are mirroring the horses. So in that photo in the top left corner, that one in particular, I remember that um, Shoki, the bay horse there was um, actually leading the way. And he, he was the one, the horse was the one that decided to start trotting a circle around this gentleman. And just look at that lovely body carriage and um, form he had. I mean, he was just so into himself in the moment, the horse was. And the, the uh, human, the gentleman, he just instinctively, look at his body position. He started trying to mirror what Shoki was doing. He has no horse experience. He has no idea what Shoki's doing. He just was connecting with him in the moment and feeding off of that energy. And it was just lovely. So some of these photos are um, the horse is mirroring the human, especially the ones where the human's walking out in front a little bit. You can tell that the human would not have been synchronizing in that moment. They're out front and the horse is synchronizing to them. And in other moments, the horse is leading the way and the human is is mirroring the horse. So interesting that people and horses do this instinctively together. But those of us who have a lot of experience with horses, we get so focused on our training or leadership or whatever we have in our mind that we're not thinking about this. But it is really easy, actually, to incorporate synchronicity and mirror, mirroring into more structured work with our horses. So these, this series of photos, it's not me, but it's actually um, a wonderful trainer here in South Carolina. named uh, Her name is Michelle Donlick. 
And um, I had driven to a clinic where she was and um, it was a series of riding lessons. And then this was a break during the day. And she asked if she could just play with Shoki. And um, at this point, this is many years ago, I really wasn't tuned into the synchronicity thing at all, but she just started playing with him where she would um, in her body posture kind of round, o- round up and, and bend over when she wanted him to stretch and round up. And then she'd lift her posture when she wanted him to lift up. And this was like this magic game. It went on for quite a while. And I ran to the truck and got my camera and I, I snapped these few photos and I'm so glad I have them. But I mean, it was just beautiful. And, and Shoki right away knew exactly what she was doing and was just mirroring um, what she was doing. And at the time I thought it was because she was just such a great trainer. <laughs> but now I know that, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to be a super experienced trainer to get this kind of synchronicity. So I also also want to take a moment to acknowledge that um, synchronicity and mirroring are not expressions used only by horses. We we actually use it use these two um, as humans, and we synchronize physically with other humans. And when we do this, it it builds or enhances the emotional connection we feel with them in the moment. So these are just a few quick pictures from my archives that show some examples of of synchronicity and mirroring. So pay attention to this in other areas of life as well. But a good place to begin is to simply start becoming more mindful of this really important aspect of communication and bonding, especially when it comes to horses. And see if you can start noticing when synchronicity is happening in the moment and just make a note of it. Also try paying attention to instances when you notice that the feeling is one of disconnection and how does... um, physical disconnection, when you see it, how does it uh, tie to emotional distance and disconnection? And what does that feel like? And then once you've practiced noticing this for a little while, you can start trying to take advantage of opportunities to either create or build synchronicity when you want to strengthen the emotional connection. And again, this can happen both in our work with horses or in other areas of our lives. So here I want to give you some specific ideas about how to incorporate this concept into your work and daily interactions with the horses in your life. So when you're training, can you think about modeling in your own body what you want your horse to do? So in that particular photo, it's it's my legs are, are mirroring what Tempo is doing. And I have found that sometimes that really can help build a connection with, the, especially with a horse that's a little bit scattered or not focused. If you can start mirroring your legs to their legs, it also changes your energy and it gets you more present in the moment. And um, it really can help a horse relax and settle into the work that they're doing. What about riding? You know, how does this relate to riding? The way I think that it's useful with riding is when we can focus more on feeling and being in sync with the rhythm of our horse's movement um, and focusing on that rather than trying to accomplish a particular goal. Like we might still be accomplishing a goal, like doing a dressage test or a jump course or whatever, but rather than focusing so much on the goal at hand and the exercise is, can we focus more on the feel and synchronizing with that feel, even maybe playing a game of, can I tell where, you know, what, when each of the legs under me is moving and and what does that feel like? So then when we're simply spending time with our horse, there's all kinds of things we can do to look for opportunities to mirror or synchronize. In that particular photo, I was actually just bringing Marcus in from one pasture to another. And I often do that without halters, but, um, I fo- I love to focus on synchronizing my steps with them when I do this. And that makes me feel really connected, even though obviously there's no halter there. I'm not even touching the horse. I'm just um, walking with him and we're very connected and he's, he's staying with me. And with a horse as big as Marcus, his legs are longer than mine. So every single step we do can't be um, exactly mirroring. So I don't want you to get caught up on that. But with him, what happens is usually it's like, two steps are synchronized with the same leg. And then there's a step or two that's off. And then suddenly I'm synchronized with opposite legs. Like I would be maybe my left foreleg, my left leg and his right foreleg instead of the same leg. And that might happen for two strides. And then we'd be off for a stride or two. And then we're back to synchronize for, for two strides. So there's a rhythm and a pattern to it, even though it's not perfect. So don't um, get caught up on every single step has to be the same. Sometimes our steps and our leg, our leg lengths just don't work for that. But what you'll notice is you'll feel 
really, really connected during those strides when you are together. And then in the strides when you're not, you'll be trying to get back to it where you are. So you're seeking that synchronization and connection. And that's a pretty cool feeling as well. Now that you know, I, I promise you are going to um, start seeing things differently. Now that you know that this is something that's really uh, deeply important and meaningful to your horse, you will start to notice it in other places. So these are two photos that were taken many, many years ago when I was really involved with Pirelli Natural Horsemanship and I was practicing um, bareback bridalist riding with Shoki. And this was actually when Puck was pregnant with Tempo. So it was about 12 years ago. And I used to ride in the paddock and I loved just riding with Puck in there. And she often joined us on our rides. But when I looked back at these photos, I was like, wow, look at that. Their legs, Puck's and Shoki's, kind of hard to see in these photos, but their legs are actually perfectly aligned in their steps. So not only was she just joining us physically, which I had noticed, she was synchronizing with Shoki and thus with me in that moment. So really cool stuff. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of To Observe Horses is to Know Horses. Um, again, part two is going to be on how horses use space to communicate and maintain healthy relationships. And part three will be on how, how horses use touch and what touch means to them. So if you submitted your email address to gain access to the link for today's discussion, this means you are already on my mailing list and you're going to receive notification when parts two and three are released. And they will be published um, probably in my online classroom. I'm working on that. So I'm not exactly sure what the format will be, but you will be notified about how to access them. And also probably will give you access to any future online presentations that I produce. So if you haven't yet signed up to receive these notifica notifications, you can do that again by going to my website at www.unbridled.guru. Thanks again. I hope you have a great day and may the horse be with you.